Using intercepts, our objective is to find x and y intercepts and interpret their meaning in real-world situations, as well as use x and y intercepts to graph lines. Who uses this? Divers can use intercepts to determine the time a safe ascent will take. A y-intercept is a point where the graph intersects the y-axis. An x-intercept is a point where the graph intersects the x-axis. So let's start by finding intercepts. So we look at our graph, our y-intercept is going to be where it crosses the y-axis. So our y-intercept would be negative 3 as a coordinate, 0, negative 3. And our x-intercept is where our graph crosses the x-axis. So that happens at negative 4, or as a coordinate, negative 4, 0. Well, what do we do when it's an equation? So to find the x-intercept, we're going to replace y with 0, because we want an x-intercept, we want a number for x. So since we want a number for x, y has to be 0. So we're going to substitute in 0 for y. And then solve. So 2 times 0 is 0. All we're left with now is 3x equals 12. So divide both sides by 3, and we end up with x equaling 4. So the x-intercept is 4. All right. Next piece, you need an x and y-intercept. We have the x, we need the y. To find the y-intercept, we're going to replace x with 0. We want a number for y, so that's why x has to be the one that's 0. So 3 times 0 is 0, leaving us with only negative 2y equals 12. To solve for y, we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. So therefore, y is going to equal negative 6. So our y-intercept is negative 6, and our x-intercept is 4. Take a moment and pause the video and try these next three. Now that you've had a moment to try them on your own, let's try them together. So our x-intercept, where does it cross the x-axis? So our x-intercept is going to be at negative 2, and our y-intercept is going to be at positive 3, since that's where it crosses the y-axis. All right, so now let's look at d. This is when we actually had to substitute in zero values. If we want to find our x-intercept, we want a number for x, so y gets to be zero. So 5 times y, 5 times zero, is gone. There's nothing there. So you're just left with negative 3x equals 30. So x has to equal negative 10. All right, so let's look at the y-intercept. You want a number for y. So x has to be 0. So when x is 0, that whole piece is just gone. Now you're just left with 5y equals 30. So if you divide both sides by 5, you end up with y equals 6. All right, one more to go here. So we want to find our x-intercept. Once again, we want a number. We want a value for x. So y is going to have no value. It's going to be 0, which leaves us with 4x equals 16. Divide both sides by 4, and x equals 4. Now let's look at our y-intercept. 
we want a number for y, so we don't want anything for x. So x gets to be 0. It's all gone. Now we're just left with 2y equals 16. Divide by 2 on both sides, and we have y equals 8. So our y-intercept is 8, and our x-intercept is 4. Let's look at a travel application. The Sandia Peak Tramway in Albuquerque, New Mexico, travels a distance of about 4,500 meters to the top of Sandia Peak. Its speed is 300 meters per minute. The function f of x equals 4,500 minus 300x gives the tram's distance in meters from the top of the peak after x minutes. Graph this function and find the intercepts. What does each of these intercepts represent? So we have our table here, and we're going to substitute in, or plot, each coordinate into our graph. Now that it's graphed, we want to figure out what each intercept represents. So we have an intercept at 4,500, and then we have another one at 15 minutes. So the y-intercept being at 4,500, this is the starting distance from the top. The x-intercept, this 15 over here, this is the time when the train reaches the peak. So this represents how far away they are when they're starting, and this represents how long it's going to take to get there. Let's look at graphing linear equations by using intercepts. Sometimes graphing linear equations using intercepts is a much faster way to graph, especially when the numbers are large, like this 4,500. All right, so let's look at our equation here, and we want to find the x-intercept. Since we want to find the x-intercept, we're going to make y equal to 0. We want a number for x, so y has to be 0. So we're just left with 2x equals 8. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 4. Now for the y-intercept. We want a value for y, so x is going to have no value. So we're going to have negative 4y equals 8. Just remember to always take the sign in front of the number. This was a positive 2, so it's a positive 2. This is a minus 4, so it's a minus 4. Now we're going to divide both sides by negative 4, leaving us with y equals negative 2. So to graph this, on the y-axis, we're going to put a dot on negative 2. And on the x-axis, we're going to put a dot on 4, and then draw a line between them like such. Let's try another one. Write an equation in standard form. So before we try to use our x and y intercepts, we want to make sure it's in standard form. This problem looks a lot uglier than it really is. Don't let these fractions scare you. So we're going to multiply both sides by 6. That way, we don't have to deal with any fractions. So if we multiply the left by 6, well, 2 thirds of 6 is 4. So we have 4y equals 6 times 4 is 24, and then half of 6 is 3. So 24 minus 3x. 
we now no longer have these ugly, crazy fractions that you have to deal with. So now let's put it in standard form. So we're going to move this 3x to the other side. So we have ax plus by equals c, if you recall back. Well, now we can find our x and y intercepts. So our, we want to find the x-intercept. That means y is going to be 0, because we want a value for x. So we're going to use the x, since it's the x-intercept, equals 24. Well, divide both sides by 3, and we end up with x equals 8. And now the y-intercept. Because we're looking for the y-intercept, x is going to be 0. It's not going to exist anymore. So we're just left with 4y equals 24. To solve for y, we're going to divide both sides by 4, leaving us with y equals 6. To graph, we're going to put a dot on 8 on the x-axis and a dot on 6 on the y-axis, and then connect them with a line like so. And that ends our lesson on using intercepts.